friends, gather round as I tell you a tale of the war between the engineers and the Ashquats. The engineers are a noble group of people. We wish to take things that are in a bad state and turn them into a good state. We make bad things good. That's our job. The Ashquats, the vile Ashquats, they stand in our way. That seems to be their only purpose. Now, the Ashquats are, uh, well, how do I put this? Insecure group. You can always tell this because the Ashquats have so many letters after their name, representing a rather large title like the Kings of Yore. I believe Ashquat stands for environmental safety and a blah, 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 nobody cares. So, as much as I love the Ashquat's utility around the site, or any industrial facility, I'm so glad they're not here. When I get to come home, I get to operate as a homeowner, and as a homeowner, I don't have to follow any regs, rules, safety violations. And as an engineer, this is great for me, because... I believe in PPE. Yes, Ashquats believe in PPE too, but I believe in PPE as a primary form of control. I would rather make the worker invulnerable to whatever hazards are present than to attempt to control the hazard with all sorts of excessive stuff. The reason that I'm mentioning this is, is before I engage in further discussion about rules or regulations and my opposition to them, we need to have a nice discussion about uh, what the problem is. And the issue with most rules or regulations and safety things is not that they are, are bad or detrimental or terrible and everybody hates them. It's that they don't let you do what you need to do sometimes. And that's the inherent problem that engineers have with most Esquad people. Sometimes you just got to stick them in fucking PPE and say, go at it, boys, or girls, or whatever. This is the case here. Now... I can't remember whether I put this video up or not. Probably not. But in here, uh, I started a project. We started to floor this area. We used a laminate floor. And as we got to the edges, we realized that there was a problem. In this edge over here, there was a rather large, bouldery looking thing jutting out of the wall. We would have to um, turn around and, well, grind it out. And that's been my job here off and on when I have a couple hours here or there to grind against the wall. The problem is that when you do grinding, you generate a lot of dust. And dust is a respirable hazard. Now, the thing about respirable hazards, they're fantastic. I mean, you have these particulates that are suspended in the air. They move like a gas. You can block them with a filter. In most power plants, you can just use a... Uh, an electro electrostatic precipitator or a, uh, uh, a, a, a pfft, whirly gig thing. Can't remember what, so, so, uh, cyclone separator, and that'll separate out the dust particles. So there's lots of ways to take care of this stuff. But if I was to be doing this with the Eshquats, the Eshquats would want me to use wet methods. Now, wet methods are interesting. Basically, you just keep your concrete and shit wet, and that produces a gigantic slurry that goes everywhere and causes a massive mess and you have to clean up later. Now, if this room was in the original state that we started the project in and I had properly scoped the project before going, my bad, then it would be fine because concrete slurry on a concrete floor, whatever, it's fucking concrete. Just clean it up when you're done. I mean, I'm going to have to go through and clean up everything once I'm done here anyways. But that wasn't the case. I had to implement this afterwards and laminate and water don't get along. And I really don't feel like cleaning up a slurry. So mitigating this hazard as a gas is fantastic. So what I have here is this problem that I started to solve just, just generally, right? I started by donning an N95 respirator. I put that on, my little dust mask thing, and uh, all of a sudden I couldn't see. Well, the entire room was filled with that dust everywhere, absolutely everywhere in the room. And uh, that's when I decided to get a full face respirator and PAPR and the whole shebang. But even then, I still needed to somehow control this dust. So I built this containment right here, right? 
Now, concrete dust is pretty heavy, so it actually precipitates out of the air relatively quickly. It, it piles up around that. It's, it's not a huge deal, very easy substance to manage. But I thought about it, and I said, well, if I put a little bit of negative ventilation in there, then I can actually remove that from the containment instead of having these piles of dust. One of the things that you find out when you start grinding is your little piles of dust that you generate just kick up and make more dust. It's, <laughs> it's like this ever-perpetuating problem. So... Um, I got this shop vac. Actually, I had another shop vac. I killed it. Uh, murdered by lots and lots of dust. And this has been my controls that I've worked with, and it's worked very, very well, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Uh, if I was to have to follow my Ashquad stuff, I'd have to either disassemble the floor or do something. It would cost me significantly more uh, amounts of time. Uh, I would have to have more materials, more potential damages. It would be a massive mess. But this way is actually pretty well. Works pretty well, and I'm going to show that to you. So let me get all my PPE, and we'll show you what we got. Uh, I'm going to start by actually demonstrating my gloves. I think I've showed these before. These are anti-vibration gloves. Whenever I'm grinding, I'm using them. They're, they're a little bit thicker than standard gloves, and they also... Uh, mitigate the hazard of vibrating instruments. I don't, I'm not working on this stuff eight hours a day. I'm not holding vibrating equipment for eight hours a day, so it's not a huge deal. Put that down. My second major PPE is my respirator. It's a PAPR. Uh, they protect me to a protection factor of a thousand. Very good, good tool. Now, I'm not actually going to turn this on because uh, you can't hear me over it, but let's, let's go take a look in here. Now, there's a couple other lessons I learned while doing this. One, even though this outlet is awfully convenient, it's pretty fucking terrible when you grind like that. The cord dangled down and I cut through it and blew, uh, got a lot of sparks and I had to go repair my device. The second thing... You need to make sure that your plastic is all the way down. Otherwise, it kind of causes problems. So to show the effectiveness of these controls, I'm going to show you what it was like without them. So here we are. We're going to put that here. You guys probably uh, won't be able to hear me for much longer because this is going to get really loud in here. Now, needless to say, this is a bit of a dusty environment. So, let's turn on the vacuum.
Now, as you can see, my room's pretty clean. I didn't have anywhere near the dust cloud I had in there. Once I turned on the vacuum, the dust cloud cleared up in there, which means I'm not taxing my HEPA filter quite as much. And uh, the reason I showed you the grinding is the dust actually flows directly from the grinder into my vacuum. So the reason I wanted to show you this is because when I start talking about regulations, my issue with them is not the idea of controlling hazardous substances. We absolutely should. I don't even have an issue with the Code of Federal Regulations. It's, it's actually a great fucking document for hazard control. The problem is that it doesn't allow innovation. It, it, you have to beg and plead and say, yeah, uh, this is terrible. There we go, that's better. Uh, you have to beg and plead for permission to do anything different. It basically kills innovation in whatever field it is that you're working in that's regulated. It's one of the reasons why software is uh, doing as well as it is, and, and one of the reasons why the space industry is doing as well as it is, because these aren't, these aren't regulated industries. They are able to operate however they want because there's no regulations in place for them. And uh, as much as the Eshquats and the engineers may be at war, at the end of the day, they have some great ideas. But... Sometimes it's just not practical to follow through on their bullshit.